Yes, sir. Today I have with me George Millionaire McCoy. What's going on, brother? How you doing today? Man, I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing great, bro. Thank you for joining me, man. Like I said earlier, I know you're a busy man, so I appreciate you for taking this time out. And, and just to kind of start it up, bro, you're originally from Chicago, right? Yes, sir. The south side of Chicago, Chatham neighborhood to be exact. Yes, sir. And so right now, just to let the world know, you're currently located in uh, San Diego, right? Downtown San Diego, California. Yes, man, sir. But that's beautiful, bro. So how did you end up in, in San Diego, man? How did you get out there? Man, I always had this thing in my head when I was a kid that California was the place where all the rich people, the wealthy people, the conscious people were, people who wanted to have uh, good air. And, um, you know, I just always wanted to move here. I always said if I cleared six figures or well over six figures in one year, one calendar year that I was going to move out here. Um, but it was crazy because I moved out here and then I cleared six figures. So um, I was doing all right in my business. Uh, I was having some ups and downs. And uh, I came out to San Diego. I came out, I came out to San Diego to do a training for some of the team that I had here that um, was a part of my business, customers in my business and stuff. I had built up a rather large team. I had some partners here in San Diego that built up a rather, rather large team. So I came out here to do an event and um, I just fell, fell in love with it. The energy was just off the wall. The people re received me totally different than what I was used to. And it was just good energy. Um, I stayed here for that event for two days. I traveled to Los Angeles uh two days after that and uh went to uh an event called the paradigm shift with bob proctor you familiar with bob proctor yeah for sure absolutely so i went to go see him for the first time i remember when i first seen the secret and uh learned about laws of attraction and everything a couple of years prior so seeing bob proctor in person was a big deal uh sold a pair of my red bottoms to a fourth a thousand dollar vip ticket to uh, actually learn from Bob Proctor in person for a three-day event. But on the way to LA, I was thinking in my head, like, man, I gotta go back to San Diego. I'm gonna go back to San Diego and help build that organization out there. And, you know, went to LA, did my thing in LA, flew back to Atlanta where I was residing at at the time. Okay. And like three weeks later, I came right back to San Diego and I just never left. It wasn't even a plan to just stay there. It was just to come back and, you know, help build the business, help train the people. And I just end up saying during one training, like, yo, guys, I, I, I'm not leaving. I'm staying here. And end up staying in San Diego, just left all my stuff in Atlanta. To this day, I still got, like, full living room set, dining room set, a lot of clothes and stuff in Atlanta. I've been in San Diego, like, almost going on two years now. Man, and look, man, Southern California is a beautiful city. So did it did it meet all your expectations or did it did it did it surpass all your expectations? Uh it actually surpassed my expectations. Uh it was some expectations it didn't meet because I thought it never rained in Southern California, and that's not true. Okay. Uh, but okay. it doesn't rain often. It doesn't yeah. rain often. But when it does rain, it rains. And uh besides that, man, um, the fact that the people are, are just extremely friendly and uh, real open. And, um, you know, I grew up in Chicago. I spent my first 10 years of adulthood in Atlanta, Georgia. Both of those areas are stricken with a lot of crime. You can't walk around with just loads of cash on you and you can't just carry yourself any type of way out there. You'll end up hurt. Um, and it's a lot of police harassment where I come from in Chicago, especially. And even in Atlanta, there's a lot of police harassment there as well. So, you know, here in San Diego, it's, you know, at least I, from what I've seen, I, I, I've never been in the hood parts. I know it's some hood parts, some dangerous parts, but it's not all over, right? The hood doesn't come downtown like that. And uh, the police do not bother you at all. I think since I've been here, I've seen three people get pulled over since my entirety of living here, since, you know, it's almost been two years. Chicago, I see somebody get pulled over every day, you know, so here it's like, man, to see no police interaction, police not messing with nobody besides like really the homeless people 
it's just it, that was beautiful. That was that was a huge part in my decision and wanting to stay. Yeah, it's, it's definitely sweet on the West Coast, bro. But so how I really found you, I think I I think I started following you maybe like two years ago, but I found you on Instagram and I saw that your energy was crazy, man. You were just like really passionate about what you were doing and you were like good with the people and um like just not afraid to be yourself and to like put yourself on that front line um for what you for what it is that you wanted, bro. And you're like one of the one of the people that I see that um is really big on manifestation and, and, and speaking things into existence. So um, I actually got that on the television right now before we hopped over here. I was uh meditating and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Absolutely. But for the people that don't know exactly what you do, bro, could you could you walk them through or, or, or give them a little insight about your career and, and maybe even how you got started? Uh well man, it's it's a long story, bro. Uh but to shorten it down, you know, like I said, I grew up in Chicago. I actually grew up in foster care. Uh, my mom was on drugs. My dad left our, our family at five when I was five years old. So grew up in foster care. I had real, very, very physically uh, abusive foster parents, physical abusive foster parents, uh, emotionally, mentally as well, but very physical abuse, crazy. Uh, couldn't really go outside. Didn't really have a lot of friends back then. So because of that, I had nothing to do but like stay at home and kind of study and, and get good grades because it wasn't really much I could do. So, you know, I always was on the AB honor roll, uh, ended up graduating top 10% of my class, uh, moved back with my biological mom, my biological grandma for like uh, two years. I, I left my foster family at 16. So really like three years I lived with my mom and my biological grandma Granted, my mom was still on drugs and my grandma was old. She had a little bit of money, but she was blind. So she couldn't really do much with me. And, you know, that was that first taste of freedom. So I started, you know, running with gangs for some reason. And, you know, I was, I was selling petty drugs and, you know, ecstasy pills and weed and stuff like that. You know, at, at 17, 18 years old, we was literally having gang meetings at my grandma's house. And, um, uh, you know, I thought that was cool, you know, following rappers and, and just the urban, what, what's cool in the hood thing to do. And it wasn't until I almost got killed uh, on a Halloween when I was 18, that Halloween in 2007, uh, I almost got murdered, like literally had an assault rifle like on my nose. And the guy was, you know, circumstances around it, the guy had every reason to go ahead and, you know, do that. And um, he spared me, and I, I took that as a sign of, you know, let me change some things so I don't, you know, end up a statistic out here. And I left Chicago to move to Atlanta to go to Morehouse College. Uh, that's a whole story in itself. I brought a lot of that Chicago mentality with me, ended up getting into some trouble. Even though I was getting good grades, I couldn't finish a semester because I kept getting, uh, I had a stint of just study getting arrested, man. I, I kept going you know, four month sentences, three month sentences, or just sitting in jail until I can get a bond or until I can pay a bond, right? And didn't really have a lot of money. Um, and end up, you know, violating one of my probations I had caught in Florida. They had ended up, you know, sending me to prison. So once that happened, the whole Morehouse thing kind of went out the window. I did two years in prison. A lot of people don't know that. I don't talk about it too, too often, but uh, yeah, man, what, but, while I was in my darkest moment, uh, sitting, you know, in prison thinking like, man, should I just go ahead and get face tattoos now? Like, it's over with. I'm not going to get no good job. College is over with. I'm a convicted felon now. It's over with for me. I'm not going to be nothing. I might as well try to be a rapper, or, you know, just a professional dealer, right? And um, I got my hands on a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad while I was in prison. And it completely like just blown my mind, changed my mindset. I never heard of none of that stuff before. Never thought about being a business owner or an investor. And uh, even when I was at my lowest point, that was like the seed, the first seed that was planted that kind of shifted me to entrepreneurship. Uh, when I got out, you know, I started back kind of following the wrong crowd, kind of forgot about what I learned, you know, from that book, but it was in the back of my head. And uh, my ex-girlfriend at the time, she put me on to a documentary called The Secret. And even though I was, you know, rapping and trapping at that time, 
you know, I watched The Secret and, and that that did something to me. Just hearing them talk about laws of attraction. If, you know, you're from the hood and you see something like The Secret, you think it's just some white people on there just trying to, you know, just, just telling you some rah-rah and, and trying to sell you something or something maybe. But I took that like heart attack serious. I truly believe that the laws of attraction was real. It just made sense to me. I always felt like I had a connection with, the universe or with infinite source or with God, however you want to look at it, right? So, you know, even though I didn't start entrepreneurship right then and there, I, I had that seed in me. And um, I had a job. I was working at a place called Wet Willies where I was busting tables and running food. And, you know, for those who don't know what that means, that means, you know, you you place your order with a waitress. Somebody got to bring out your, your nachos and your hot wings. I was the guy that had to bring that to your table and place it in front of you, right? And then... You know, you leave your dirty napkins, you leave your chicken bones there, and you leave, you know, somebody got to come and clean all that up. That was my job as well, too. So it wasn't the most desirable job in the world, but Wet Willie's was a party every night. So it was like a fun job, even though I had, uh, for lack of better terms, a peon position there. Um, but I worked there for a whole year. They actually fired me pretty much for no reason, made up something to fire me. And that was pretty much my breaking point where I said, you know what, I'm not working a job again. That's that's over with. So uh, for that following year, I, I was, you know, participating in some activities. I can't go too much in de into detail about, you know, that wasn't necessarily legal, though. And um, I was getting some type of money. I was I was making some real good money. But a close friend of mine had caught a federal case. And, you know, I'm trying to help him out because I had money at that time to help people and. You know, we get this discovery pack and then they got my picture in there. And even though we're associates, we're around each other all the time. What he was doing was separate from what I was doing. So I'm like, yo, like, whoa, how am I in this federal packet? You know, so that was like the, the you by all out decision. Say that again? They were trying to crucify you by association. Man, by a clear association, like, or shit, association. I'm like, oh, he's not doing that, but he is doing this. So let's get him for that. So that was the day, even though I was making money, I just like, I put myself in a position where I sold all that stuff and I, I couldn't get back to it. I couldn't get it again. And I just made the decision just to go complete cold turkey, even though I was making probably like six figures in the streets at that time. I just made a decision to go complete cold turkey with it and just completely quit. And it was crazy because I was like, I knew I didn't want to go back to a job. And it just so happened, I, I was on Baller Alert, the Instagram page Baller Alert. I was on Baller Alert, and I seen a gentleman, young, 23 years old, standing in front of an Audi with a suit on, talking about how he's from the hoods of Miami. Uh, he used to pick up garbage on the beach, and now he's a multiple six-figure earner from a from-home business. And I'm like, a from-home business? What the hell is that? <laughs> so... You know, I slid in his DM, pause, I slid in his DM, and, um, you know, he, he introduced me to the world of network marketing, and that, that was my, my foot into entrepreneurship, and life has never been the same ever since I joined network marketing. Everything completely changed for me. Yeah, man, and that's crazy, bro. So, it seemed like your upbringing, man, is really what, it seemed like your upbringing is really what put a lot of that drive in you, bro, to, to push so hard with this network marketing to be able to, to just take those risks and not be afraid, man. Because I know a lot of people don't even really want to put their face on social media or, or even talk because of insecurities and self-conscious. So just to see Absolutely. you on their, on their front line putting in work, man, that's motivational. And so, um, you know, now that you've been in, so as a matter of fact, how long have you been in network marketing? Uh, all together, it's been about three and a half years. Yeah. I want to say I started March of 2018, of 2017, actually, March of 2017. And um, so, yeah, three years and some change, I guess. Uh, I've been with my, my particular company that I'm with now for uh, two and a half years. Okay. So I was in another company, the first company I joined with, with the guy that I met on Ball Alert. I was with that company for about four to six months and and I've been with my current uh company that I'm with now for about two and a half years. For sure, bro. And as a network marketer, man, I I I, I did a little research on that. But as a network marketer, man, you, you it's like it's just you like meaning like you out there's nobody to really depend on how you 
you eat based off what you do, what the actions you put in. So as like a full-time entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying? Walk us through like a, a normal day for you. Like what is your schedule like on, on an average day for you being an entrepreneur, being, you know, not having to clock in, not having to go to a building and sit behind a desk in a cubicle. Like what's that like for you? Well, uh, I always start off my day with uh, just concentrated breathing and meditation. Um, I have what we call a goal book. <laughs> I start off my day looking at my goal book and, you know, I got a lot of edited pictures and like pictures of uh, properties and, and what I want my bank account to look like, things like that. But then right after that, it's like right to the grind. It's like you clock in from bed, you know. So even though it's entrepreneurship, yes, I, I get to go to sleep when I'm tired of being woke. I wasn't on here at 11 because I was up to like five in the morning looking at like different audios on YouTube and taking notes on stuff. I shouldn't have did that. I forgot. I had to be on here at uh, 11 Pacific time. But um, yeah, man, uh, you know, you wake up when you're tired of sleeping. But uh, we, we do something called, you know, we, we have to show the plan. We have to show the opportunity what it is, right? Because it's network marketing. Network marketing is basically when you market a product or a service to your network or through other people's networks. So network marketing, in my opinion, it gives you the greatest form of leverage, right? Because when I started, like an example with this particular company back in September of 2017, it was just me, right? It was me and, you know, Riyadh Jones, the guy who actually, you know, I'm partnered with. And, you know, I went out and I started recruiting and I started recruiting, but, you end up recruiting customers, people who actually want the product or the service. That's the main people that you market to. And as you acquire customers for your product or for your service, you can now, you know, help them get a desired result, right? Let's say, you know, I was doing the credit repair company. That's the first company I was with. I'm not with that company now, but that's why I started, right? I will help somebody, you know, get started with our program who needed to get negative items removed off their credit score, right? How many people do you know right now that has a credit score below 600, right? And they may be trying to purchase a house, purchase a car, get into a, a desirable apartment complex, or just little things like have credit cards, right? Or store credit. Uh, a lot of people, right? So they come in as customers, we help them get those negative items off and they see that the program is actually working. And now it's like, hey, do you know anybody that would like these same services. Hey, you can actually benefit just like I'm benefiting off of this from introducing this to other people that would like the service as well. So now they get to, you know, sharing it with their networks, but what they bring in will count towards my income as well also, right? So that's the beautiful part about network marketing. It allows you to create leverage. And as a business owner, that's two, one of the two things that you really, really want. You want a system and you want leverage, right? J. Paul Getty, the first documented billionaire, he said it best. I'd rather have 1% of 100 individuals' efforts rather than only 100% of only my own efforts. Meaning, you know, when mom said, if you want something done right, do it yourself. That's not how millionaires and billionaires think. They create a system and they leverage other people who can go do the work. And now they get to get paid without physically being there all the time. Now, with network marketing, you do have to physically like be there most of the time to help train your people and you know help make sure they're getting educated or at least create a system where all of that is going on and maybe you don't have to be there. I prefer to be hands-on because I actually love what I do. But um, yeah, so uh, average day for me, you know, like right now today, I I'm a part of a company where we actually teach people how to invest into the foreign exchange market, Forex. Uh, how to invest into binary options, which is high frequency trading, able to actually make profits in minutes, like literally like two or three minutes, you can make profits. And uh, also digital currency, which in my opinion, digital currency, cryptocurrency, like your Bitcoins, your Ethereums, your Litecoins, and even XRP Ripple, which is my personal favorite crypto. These coins are like about to revolutionize the world. It's already happening, but it's about to happen at mass adoption. The largest transfer of wealth in human history is literally happening right now before our eyes. And a lot of people are distracted with COVID-19 and 
you know, the injustices with police brutality, but it's something really big going on in the financial system that's already happening in countries in China, countries in Africa, where they're not even accepting cash anymore. It's a paperless societies, it's paperless countries out there. So we educate people on all three of those topics. And, um, you know, if you know other people that want to get educated and become profitable in those markets as well, now you can leverage the platform, leverage the system. They are, I didn't have to like come up with educators who can teach or come up with products that work to help you make money in the markets. The company that we're partnered with, the network marketing company, they have the system already created. So we didn't have to pay tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars to create these systems or get a hundred different millionaire educators on schedule to teach, you know, every hour of the hour, all throughout the day, the system was already created. We get to leverage the system where we can take advantage of it as customers. Like I make good money trading, but I also make good money from helping build teams of people who want to learn how to trade or potentially go out and build teams as well. So uh, we show the plan a lot, right? We show, like, actually introduce people to what Forex actually is, what the company actually is. That happens on Zoom. Obviously, we can't do a lot of social things right now, so everything's virtual right now. So we do that on Zoom uh, pretty much, uh, man, throughout my organization, it's probably, like, at least – six to 10 times a day, a presentation is happening where brand new eyeballs are seeing the information. And, um, you know, we got trainings throughout the day as well, where we actually educating people and helping people become profitable because that's how they'll want to, you know, go out and share it with other people. If we do what we say we're going to do, we say you're going to get started and within 24 to 72 hours, you can make profit. And we do that, that person is now inclined to want to go out and share it with other people and it helps build their residual income and it helps build, you know, the people that's above them and the structure helps build their residual income as well as myself, as well as the people above me that started before me. So network marketing, man, it's, it's a beautiful way to get uh, leverage, get access to a system that you don't have to pay for, right? It's like a, a very, very cheap startup cost. We're talking about a couple hundred bucks versus tens of thousands of dollars to create a system, create a website, create all these different things. And uh, also, it gives you that leverage where now it's not just me. Right now, as I'm talking to you, two of my top leaders that's on my team that are making about between two to $5,000 a month residually, that's looking to get to that next level of six figures, they're showing the plan right now so they can get to that next level of six figures. They're introducing people to the platform, getting people signed up. Literally, like I'm looking at the notifications on my phone, literally right now as we speak, they're on a different Zoom link showing what it is that we do is signing up new customers or potential new business partners. And I'm here talking with you. And that's contributing. What they're doing is contributing, you know, fortunately contributing towards my income. So, and that's, the, that's, that's how that works. Yeah, that's amazing in itself, bro. And when I first got introduced to uh, network marketing, maybe like three years ago, I'm like, I was looking at it kind of skeptical. But then I, I realized, man, it's like everything is really network marketing. Like, you know Absolutely. what I'm saying? In our culture, like, we look at rappers rappers and athletes like, okay, these are the ones, these are the guys uh, everybody kind of looking to and looking up to. But it's like if you think about it, rappers are really network marketing too. You got your Lil Wayne who will bring in a Drake and Nicki Minaj to now hit a fan base. And now they're getting streams of money and Wayne get a piece of that or even you know, thug. I'm glad you said that because that's yeah. a perfect example of network marketing. You got to go back to Slim and Birdman. Yeah. Slim doesn't even rap. Right. Birdman yeah. is the, one of the, he's not one of the top 50 greatest rappers of all time. Let's just say that. Right. I don't want to hate on Birdman. But right. we all know about Miss Gladys, right? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. We all know about, you know, the, yeah. the, the hand rubbing, right? Yeah. Birdman isn't the best rapper in the world. What yeah. did Birdman do? He ended up signing one of the greatest rappers of all time. And then what did that rapper do? He ended up signing two of the greatest entertainers, the greatest songwriter uh, and Drake, and you know one of the greatest female hip hop artists of all time with Nicki Minaj. So yeah. who is, where's is all that money going? Yes, Nicki Minaj and Drake are filthy rich, but guess what? Lil Wayne is making money off of that. And guess what? Birdman and Slim is making money off of that as well. And remember, 
Slim doesn't even rap or barely be on the television. So yeah, you, that, that's a perfect example of what network marketing is, where you can go out, somebody who doesn't have, you may not have a whole lot of influence. You may not have the greatest entrepreneurial spirit or mindset. You may not be willing to go out and get on, you know, Instagram or show up to different events and get in front of a room and, you know, tell your story and explain the products and service. You may not be good at that. You may not have a huge clientele or a lot of pop popularity or know a whole lot of people. You may not have a huge network. But out of the small network that you do have, you may know some people who do have a large network, who does credit repair or does taxes or somebody who does like celebrity hair or nails or, you know, somebody who's just super popular in sports or super popular in high school, uh, super popular in college, somebody who's in a fraternity or sorority, right? Somebody who does actually have tens of thousands of followers on social media. You may know that person, introduce them to the product or service, let's say for example, Forex, you help get that person started, help that person become profitable, and then you show them the benefits of the compensation plan, how they can get compensated for actually sharing what works for them to their network, and then they go out and blow it up. Well, guess what? You're going to get the benefits of them going out and blow it up, and all you did was bring in that one person. That's a fact, bro. And that kind of leads me into my next question, bro. My next thing, I hear you talk about the team and the network of people, bro. So how important is it to you and for your business specifically to build that team and to have a good network of people. And like, you know, the more people you deal with, you, you, you kind of sometimes like, all right, I don't really want to mess with this guy or they not good business or they might be late or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So like at the same time, how do you screen for your team? Like to see who I'm picking, who I want to, you know what I'm saying? How do you, what's your thoughts on that? That's so crazy that you brought that up because that was actually an issue that, uh. I was actually going through in my business yesterday, just yesterday, like yesterday morning. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not very judgmental because I've done a lot of things that I'm not necessarily just super proud of. And, you know, I, I used to, you know, for lack of better terms, I used to move like a low life, right? I, I hate to judge those people that's still in those situations, but it is what it is. I was doing low life, you know, I was doing ratchet shit with my ratchet friends, right? It just <laughs> kind of is what it is, right? But, um, you know, I, I'm always open to anybody that really wants to get to the next level, anybody who really wants to change, anybody who really wants to, you know, shift their life around. Because I truly believe that life is a movie. You're yeah. the main actor. Yeah. You're the director and the writer of the script. And yeah. you can change your role at any given time. You're not subjective to be the same person you were last year, last month or even after watching this podcast, you know, so you can change at any time. Cause I know I just up out of the blue, just started getting on Instagram. I started wearing suits. Even when I was going to Morehouse, I didn't own a suit. And now yeah. all of a sudden I'm wearing suits. I'm talking proper. I'm saying all these inspirational quotes. And a yeah. lot of people laughed at me at first. They was like, what is this guy? He's, he's really scamming now. Like you yeah. know, selling drugs, now he's scamming. What is, what is, what is he doing? Yeah. And, you know, I had to do it for quite some time. I had to stay very consistent. And a lot of people that I knew beforehand didn't join me. I yeah. ended up bringing in a lot of strangers who only knew that new person I was. And now, a year later, two years later, three years later, people who did know me that seen I was so consistent throughout the years, they're joining me left and right. Even some of my friends who graduated Morehouse and went on to grad school and, you know, got their master's and working a career, not a job, a career something that's like to do with their degree field and they realize like yo i've been doing this like the last seven years i don't want to do this another 33 years of my life just to retire on a pension that's not going to be able to have me in the lifestyle that i really want at an older age what can i do so i can live a free life like you so i can make six figures like you right but because of that you do got to be somewhat of a talent scout right i i, I got a team so big I can't work with everybody. It just is what it is. It's too many people. So I develop leaders. I look for people who actually have the potential to take this to the next level business-wise. Uh, I look for people who will look good standing next to me, right? Somebody who actually, like, you know, has morals and, and, and business etiquette and just, you know, carry themselves in a certain way. Not saying you can't be cutthroat. 
because at times I'm a cutthroat businessman. I like to get to the bag. I am very money motivated. Um, I'm very respectful. I try not to hurt nobody's feelings, but I do call it how it is at times. But it's like almost like being a, a talent search or a, a talent scout for like college sports, right? Football, basketball, you got these different talent scouts that go out to these different high schools and they're looking for talent. They're looking to recruit people to come to their college, to come to their collegiate program and play for their school. So it's almost like being a talent scout. Uh, once you've got custom, because anybody can trade. You can come in with face tattoos, gold teeth. It doesn't matter if you're fresh out of Yale or fresh out of jail. Anybody can come in and learn how to trade. You get what I'm saying? So as far as like the people that we really want to run with, and we want to promote and we want to, you know, have leading team calls so the whole team can hear their voice and giving that person that influence. You know, you kind of do want to make sure that that person uh, has some, some, some morale to them, right, and, and some common sense and different things of that nature. So you just got to be a talent scout for the most part. Yeah, for sure, brother. And, and, and um. So what I'm hearing is, bro, you've always been a hustler. You've always been self-motivated, which I think is one of the most important things to have, self-motivation and then to be persistent, of course. But making that transition from, um, you know what I'm saying, working at Wet Willys to going completely on your own straight into network marketing, was that hard? Was that scary for you? Or, or were you like, man, look, I done already got it out the mud before. This is nothing. Like, what was your thought process on making that transition from basically, um, you know what I'm saying, working for, you know, doing this job that, that you know, it was fun, but you didn't really like to doing, to, to getting this financial freedom now? Man, it was definitely a uh, scary moments. Yeah. Uh, I did have the mentality of, you know, I got it out the mud before. As long as I don't end up on the streets begging for change, I could give this all I got. I wasn't scared of getting evicted. Uh, I wasn't scared of having to sell things in the house, sell TVs or furniture or whatever. And um, I, I just wasn't scared, man. I, I just always kind of lived my life off of faith. You know, yeah. things, the unseen, things that hasn't even happened yet. I always kind of just went off of my visions and uh, went off of insight. But one thing I definitely have to give it to is the mentorship that we have within our organization, even with the guy who personally enrolled me, Riyad Jones. Uh, when he first started, when we first started this thing, he was real big on learning network marketing and learning the process. Even with the guy who I met off of uh, Ball Alert, Alfred Nixon, this is a guy who's like, he's 24, about to be 20, no, he's 25, about to be 26 in uh, September. And, you know, he's a legend in the industry right now. He's like top 50 income earner in the whole industry of network marketing. And it's tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people that's in the industry. He's top 50 income earner at such a young age. So I was blessed and fortunate. Most people, they come in under people who are either like still new of network marketing, still trying to figure it out themselves. You might be the first few people that I signed up, right? You, you, most people come in under new people. For some reason, God just, just put, blessed me with, you know, legends. I came in under Alfred Nixon legend in network marketing a lot of people know who that is he personally signed me up and gave me mentorship and then when i jumped ship and I, I joined another company riyad jones even though he wasn't um financially a legend in the physical he had a vision where it was just hard not to see the grace on his life it was very hard not to see that he was going to get to the next. like it was like i knew he was going to go to the next level and i understood the law of association so, you know, not to say I rode his coattails because, you know, I'm the number one recruiter on his team and I, I pretty much have the biggest team organization in his team. But uh, he definitely came with a lot of mentorship, a lot of guidance uh, with faith and, and, you know, just staying the course. And then my personal mentor, Mr. David E. Monitier, he's actually the number one African-American network marketer in the world. Um, and he's, you know, we're blessed to have him with this particular organization. He gave me a lot of mentorship on belief. Uh, he put me on to Napoleon Hill, this good book that I read at least 15 minutes a day, every single freaking day, no matter what. Uh, he put me on to Think and Grow Rich. He's actually the reason I went to see Bob Proctor in person. 
and I got this, uh, you know, this react and respond coin, which helps me with my, I used to have a little bit of an attitude problem. I could say that attitude that went away dramatically. Uh, but yeah, David, this is him right here, Mr. David E. Monizier. He, uh, he put me on to a lot of different things with understanding belief, the power of belief. I never understood, like, they didn't teach us about belief and imagination and faith outside of, like, church and Jesus and stuff, but, like, faith and practical teachings, like, what faith really is, the substance of faith. We never really learned that stuff. And, you know, having that mentorship from people like David and Bob Proctor just changed absolutely everything. So even when I was going through, because it was a journey, right? It took me two years um, in this particular company to become a six-figure earner. So, you know, and I, I watched other people. Bro, it, it, was really though, it was really in the grand scheme of things, though. That's really not even, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it, on the journey, two years sound like a long time, bro. But realistically, like, you studying history, it take, you know what I'm saying? The average millionaire is like 50, it's like 62. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So still be this young, and you talking about two years to be a six-figure earner. That's like that's still not even average. So that, that absolutely just show, that just show the type of work ethic. But but yeah, bro, keep going. Um, I will say this. You know, I could I look at it like college, man. Um, Alfred Alfred shift my mindset early on. He said, look at this like going to college. Most people they go to college for four years to get a degree. And there's no guarantee that you're going to become successful after you even get through that four-year process. Right. And while you're going through that process, most college students are broke. They're living in dorm rooms. They don't have a car. They have to depend off the cafeteria. They can't really afford to eat out all the time. Or, you know, if they do got a job, it's mostly work study. And that doesn't pay much over, uh, you know, minimum wage. So most college students, it's not a secret, are broke going through college while putting themselves in debt, right? Most people who go to college are broke going through those four years, right? They're not going through these four years with just tens of thousands of dollars in savings, right? Some people get Pell Grants and, and unsubsidized loans and refund checks and all that, but that's loans. Like, you got to pay that stuff back. So even when you do get that money, they, a lot of people don't really understand that they're making a decision at the age of 17 or 18 to put themselves in tens of thousands of dollars worth of debt just to get a BS, right? And that, that's what they call it. I didn't make that up. They, they literally call that piece of paper a BS. But, uh, you know, and if you could go through that and, and go through the hardships of going to bed hungry, which I vividly remember going to bed hungry. I remember stealing burgers out of the cafeteria and stuffing it in my book bag just so I could have food to eat at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12 p.m., you know, if you could go through all that and still have faith and still show up to class and still study and still, you know, put in the work to actually get to the next level, get that degree, if you apply that same mentality to network marketing, you may not have a whole lot of success in your first year. I didn't. You may not have a whole lot of success in your second year. I was warming up and I started making good part-time income. But I didn't become a six-figure earner and none of that within my real second year. It was like two and a half years. I hit, you know, a position called Platinum 5000, which starts paying $5,000 a month. And that's when life started to change a little bit. It was like, okay, this is the type of income that I can support myself. I can, you know, buy some clothes, buy some shoes, help out Mom Dukes. I can live in a nice, a nice place. You know, I could have got a car note. I, I still don't have a car at this moment because I'm not going to buy a car until I get exactly what I want, right? I don't want to settle for a three, a C series Benz or, you know, a six series BMW. I did all that back in my trapping days. I had foreign cars and stuff. So now it's like, you know, I just Uber black it until I get that Urus, right? Until I get the Rolls Royce, uh, um, the, the Rolls Royce truck, right? The Cullivan. So, I, I got certain things that I want now. So it's like having those images and I, I keep these images and all these things around. Like I keep pictures and stuff around because I got to see that that's what drives me every day. When things aren't going right, when the business goes backwards, when money is lost, when people quit that you invested into and all those things happen, you know, you, you focus on the vision. You begin with the end in mind. The end is the vision. 
What is it that you're going to get out of this? What's the type of life you're going to be living? What type of people are you going to impact? How are people going to view you and, and praise you? And, and just everything that comes with that, the vision is really what kept me going throughout the process, even through the hard parts, even through the parts where I wanted to give up, right? The vision and mentorship, because it was definitely, I remember, you know, it's a, it's a, I'm going I'm to end this part with this. It's a meme on Instagram that goes around a lot of a guy with an a, a axe or a pitch axe or something uh, digging for diamonds, right? And yeah. He's digging, he's digging, he's digging. Yeah. And then he get like 10 feet away from gold, right? That's, that's yeah. a chapter in this book where it talks about that, 10 feet away from gold. But he gets like real close to where the diamonds are at. And he just gives up like, man, I've been doing all this work. I look to the left, somebody else that got their diamond way easier, way faster. Yeah, it's like, man, it, it, I'm not built for this, man. This is only for like people who grew up in church or people who already came from entrepreneurship backgrounds. Man, I'm a convicted felon. I'm from the South Side of Chicago. I got crazy tattoos and stuff. I listen to Chief Keef and Gucci, man. Who, I'm, who am I kidding, man? I'm not. I'm not built for this. But yeah. having that mentorship, having that coach to keep you in the game, having that Phil Jackson to really like pour into you and keep you going. You know, that, that played a huge part because my business, you know, did take a tumble. I went from, you know, making $2,000 a month, which was like barely making ends meet, but it was making ends meet. I can pay bills. I can buy groceries. Ain't no new shoes or nothing, but I can pay bills and buy groceries and, you know, get around and stuff. And then going backwards back to $1,000 a month, it's like, yo, how am I going to pay rent? Rent yeah. is 1200 Like, yo, like, what the hell? How am I going to buy groceries? Like, man. I've, I've been doing this for like a whole year and some change, like, man, and, and and having that coach that got me back in the game three months after that, that's when I had a major breakthrough in the company. Uh, I personally enrolled about 76 customers in the company, which at that time was a, a record for the company. And uh, they gave me a $10,000 bonus for that. It was like a contest going on that I didn't even know about until the second half of the month. I won a $10,000 bonus. Everybody in the company all of a sudden knew who I was. I had a name. And I went from $1,000 a month all the way up to $5,000 a month. And, you know, it's, it's it never been no 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 looking back ever since then. We, we get got to the next level after that. And now we're very close to another level even after that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely been a journey. And, and it had a lot of ups and downs. But faith mentorship and the vision is what kept me personally in the game long term yeah and that's the beauty of it bro and that's what the world like to see man the world love to hear these stories man these scarface stories or these paid in full stories man or folks just having to wait they turn and and basically you know eat dirt you know what i'm saying until they can until right. they can uh you know live a life of luxury bro it's like when the people see you make that progression it's like they'll just give it to you even more. They'll let you bask in that even more. Like, you deserve it. You work hard for this. You know what I'm saying? It's exactly. your time. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's, exactly. that's fire, bro, just to keep persevering through all the negativity and all the ups and downs, man. But what you're doing right now, I, I understand that, you know, events are a big part of what you're doing, like face-to-face -face meeting with people. But since this COVID went on, bro, you already touched on that. Um, you know, how did that affect your business and like how you do things and how you move and operate. Did that slow anything down? Did it pick it up? Like how did um, COVID-19 is an unfortunate event. Um, I'm somewhat of a conspiracy theorist, but I'm not going to get into that on yeah, this, on this no. uh, podcast right now. <laughs> I do believe in the pandemic. I am one of those individuals who believes that this is orchestrated beforehand because I've seen a lot of proof of things that just raise eyebrows, but Right. Unfortunately, uh, COVID is, is, is unfortunate, not just because people are getting sick and, and passing away. I believe that's what's happening, right? That's at least what we see with our eyes, but can't believe everything you see nowadays. But what I definitely know to be a fact is that a lot of businesses are shut down. And, you know, unfortunately, people are out of work. People who are living paycheck to paycheck. The average American lives paycheck to paycheck. Most people, if they go two or three months without receiving a paycheck from their job, it's over. They, they're completely at zero. So, you know, um, that's un very, very, very unfortunate. And, you know, it was not, I didn't create COVID-19. I didn't put the coronavirus out there. But uh, 
because of these events, a lot of people are kind of desperately looking for a new way of making income. And because of that, not just within our personal team, but the company as a, as a whole has been a tremendous amount of, mo of momentum from uh, March to January 1st. I believe the company has produced six new millionaires um, and probably, probably at least 300 people that have hit six figures just in the last 90 days alone. And, you know, we've been blessed and fortunate to have some of that come out of our camp. So, you know, it's actually helped a lot because people are now starting to realize that they cannot depend on just, first off, they can't just depend on a job. Nothing wrong with a job. And I'm not down on jobs. I've had over 20 of those things. I've worked at Target, KFC, Family Dollars, CVS, Walgreens, a tax office, work study, you know, restaurants. I, I didn't had all types of jobs. I could sit up here and, and list jobs all day. Never had a job longer than three months, though, besides Wet Willies. Wet Willies was the longest job I had. I worked at Wet Willies for a year. Every other job was three months or less. I get a couple paychecks and I'm gone. <laughs> but, uh, a lot of people starting to realize that a job, J-O-B, actually just stands for just over broke, right? They're not going to pay you enough so you can move into the same condominium complex that they live in. They're not going to pay you enough so you can move into their, you know, their country club hills or their, you know, complexes where they stay at. They're going to pay you enough just so you can, you know, pay your bills, have a few dollars left over. You can treat yourself here and there, get your nails done, get a haircut, maybe a facial. Maybe go out and pop a bottle on the weekend or maybe get some beer. Some people can't pop a bottle. Get some beers and get some Wells drinks, some cheap drinks. And then, boom, Monday you got to be right back, over, you know, do it all over again. A lot of people realizing that job is just over broke, man. They, they're not paying you what you really, truly deserve. So most people now, they keep the job because of the security, right? It requires no faith. You, you work a job, it require, you know for a fact you're going to get paid every two weeks or every week or however it goes, right? I haven't had a job in a minute. But <laughs> you know for a fact that you're going to get paid every two weeks or so, right? It, yeah. it, it requires no faith. Well, entrepreneurship and even with investing, it requires faith. It's no guarantees that you're going to make money in your business. It's no guarantees that you're going to make money you know, with that investment, you buy Bitcoin, you buy real estate, you put money in the stocks or whatever the case may be, it's no guarantee that any that that's going to get you an ROI. So, you know, uh, you, you I, I find it, you know, that faith is like the cheat code to unlocking true potential and getting in the endless results, endless possibilities. When you live life on faith, when you live life on the unknown when you actually live life on taking risks and chances, that's, that's what pleases God the most. And the Bible actually says it's impossible to please God without faith. So most people spend 40 hours a week, 40 years of their life operating in an arena that doesn't require faith. And they're looking up and down for, for, for blessings to fall out the sky, but it, it doesn't work like that, right? You can't apply faith with your job. So, you know, with the whole COVID thing, it, it put people in a position where now, you know, they have to find multiple streams of income. Even if they have their job still, most hours are being cut. So a lot of people have a lot more time on their hands and they're looking for, you know, opportunities now. People are now open to taking more risks and more chances because it's like, what, what do you got to lose? You're already losing, you know, everything. You might as well take a risk or chance to be able to provide for yourselves. And, it's a lot of people that's looking to learn about Forex and stuff. So it, it, it helped our business out tremendously, actually. Yeah, man. And I know, I know that's a, uh, probably, I mean, like, I know it's got to be a bittersweet time because you're like, man, everybody losing their job. But like, man, now folks kind of seeing what's going on, like seeing I was trying to, and I think, I think, bro, that's why I reached out to you too, because you've been doing this for a while. And so it's kind of like perfect time and it's like perfect climate for you. You've been doing this for a minute, showing that, um, you know what I'm saying? It just seemed like a trustworthy source. So now it's like, all right, bro, I've been telling y'all for the last two or three years to, to join the team, and now everybody kind of listening and coming along. So I know that's, that's exactly what's going on right now. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you're in the right place, right time. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's dope too, bro. But as an entrepreneur, uh, you know what I'm saying? How do you define success? Like, like what do you define it? How do you define success? And then 
how do you want people to remember you? I heard you talking earlier about basically about legacy. You see what I'm saying? So it, that's two. That's a two part question. But first part being, how do you define that success? And then the next part, how do you want to be remembered? Uh, great questions. Great questions. So success. Uh, has many definitions, uh, depends on the person, but the best definition of success that I heard uh, was actually from Earl Nightingale. Uh, he said that success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. The progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So actually having um, something that's worthy of chasing and actually going after it each and every day. Success is a journey. It's not a destination. You never actually reach success. Success is everlasting. Um, as soon as you feel like you're successful and you're full of success and it's over with, that's when you, when you stop growing, you start dying, in my yeah. opinion. So success is something that's a moving target, right? Yes. I remember when I first started this particular company, we have a position called Chairman, Chairman 10, which is the first six-figure position with the residual side, with the team building side, right? You can obviously make six figures trading as well too. So um, that was my goal, man. I have, I'm so happy and grateful now that I make $10,000 a month in my, you know, my, my from home business. And that was, you know, the target. That's what I was aiming for each and every day. And, you know, they say, if you aim for the moon, you land amongst the stars. I was landing amongst the stars. I was getting the 2000 a month and, you know, it took a lot of hard work. I eventually got to 5000 a month, but something clicked in me when I uh, started studying Grant Cardone, who talks about the 10X rule, 10 times your goal. So if your goal is $100,000 a year, make your goal a million dollars a year and watch how fast you get to 100000 a year. And we applied that, sh that, that mentality and success changed, right? The target changed. Now the target is, oh, millionaire status. Okay, I'm about to start calling myself Millionaire McCoy. Until I hit a million dollars, then I'm gonna start calling myself Billionaire McCoy. So, you know, uh, success was $10,000 a month. Now success is $100,000 a month. Um, and as we're getting closer to that, now it's like success is $10 million, you know, in, in total income and assets, right? So uh success it, it just changes man it's something that you feel like is worthy and you progressively going after it you're progressively getting better to get to obtain it you're progressively sharpening your skills you're progressively doing the work that it takes you're progressively working on yourself to become the type of person who should receive that income because we're not talking about the lottery here this is entrepreneurship you got to become the type of person who should be making a million dollars a year or a million dollars a month right so um that that's what success is to me uh personally and um the second question was about legacy uh i have a goal i have something that i feel like is success as well um i have a goal to create this is just one of the goals that's in me right now i'm pretty sure uh as as life is going on there's going to be other things that come to me i already know but um, one thing I do know for sure that I want to leave a legacy with is literally putting a complete end, a complete, a, a, a zero percent, nowhere around the world, anybody is going to bed unsheltered or hungry, anywhere, in any country, in any third world place, I don't care what's going on, where it's happening at, even if they're eating slop or, or, or less desirable food, Nobody should go to bed hungry and nobody should go to bed without shelter, right? And um, it's so crazy that I'm even talking about this because I seen something on Instagram yesterday where it was somebody that was uh, doing a social distancing yoga company where they had like these yoga bubbles and it's like people are outside in the park and everybody's inside their own bubble and stuff for social distancing and stuff. And I'm just thinking like, wait a minute, if, you, if somebody can create that, why is it homeless people dying in Chicago during the winter time from freezing temperatures. When we could create some type of insulated bubble that warms up in the key, even though they're still on the street, even though they're still not living the life they, they you know, probably want to live, they're at least sheltered. And of course, you know, it's, it's, it's more, man, we throw away so much food, it's ridiculous. It's enough food here 
it's enough money here. It shouldn't be billionaires in the world if it's people sleeping on sidewalks. That just don't make sense to me. So I want to do my due diligence in creating what I like to call mega shelters, where it's not just a shelter for homeless people to stay in. You know, you get your basic necessities, but it's like actual reprogramming the mind type classes for those who are not like mentally ill. If you got common sense still and you're just down on your luck, you made a lot of bad decisions, we're going to house you, we're going to feed you, we're going to take care of you. You're actually going to have servants, like serve, that you're going to be served. So you will have people that are like actually working for you. It's like you have concierges and, and waitresses and, and butlers and cooks that's there serving the meek. Um, and it, it's going to be a desirable place that they will want to stay at, but in order for them to remain there, they have to go through these reprogramming classes where we're going to reprogram their mind for success so eventually they can get back out in society and actually function to a certain level, to a certain degree, or maybe even become you know, millionaire, multi-millionaire, somebody that just went from, you know, living under Vidox like a Tyler Perry. And now, you know, we see what Tyler Perry's doing today, right? He literally used to sleep in his car and live under Vidox. So that that's my mentality. That's one thing that I want to leave uh, Earth with before I, you know, pass on. That That's one part of my legacy. I'm pretty sure, you know, I grew up in foster care. I haven't really put a lot of thought in it, but I know I have a desire to want to change the foster care system. Um, and it's, it's other things that's out there that I want to do is definitely, but my number one desire is the mega shelters. Man, I think that's, bro, that's like one of the dopest things I done heard, bro. That's one of the dopest things I done heard for sure. And it's such, it's such like a big goal, you know what I'm saying? It, it just show the type of mindset that you have. I mean, that's like a huge thing to try to cover. And, the, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad you said that out here on this podcast, bro, because you're just putting that out into the atmosphere and maybe somebody will hear it that's, that has a similar goal, that has a similar thing and they might reach out and connect, bro. So I think that's a dope legacy to leave behind, bro. Cause I really feel that that's one of the, one of the main reasons why, why we're put here on this earth is to help people, to help others. Absolutely. Even if it's, it doesn't always have to necessarily be um, helping somebody with money, but it can just be helping their mindset, motivating them. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's more things important than money in the world. So I think with, with a goal like that and with um, plans like that, man, you can't never lose just keeping the people first, man. Um, but just kind of uh, on this podcast, bro, we like to end everything, we like to play a little question game because I know things can get kind of deep talking about entrepreneurship and this, you know what I'm saying, life and passion and everything, bro. So I just want to ask you, ask a few fun questions for you, bro, if that's cool with you. Let's do it. First question, bro, where your favorite place to travel? Favorite place to travel, the grocery store. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I, 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 I've only traveled outside the country twice. I've been to the Bahamas and I've been to Dubai. And um, I, lo- I like both of them. Dubai was like crazy. I'm definitely going back to Dubai. And, I think um, I remember seeing you in a post with the, uh, in the, yeah, in the yeah. White- <laughs> yeah, I think I remember that. Bro. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me and my, my my girlfriend, we was out there. It was it was super, super fun. I actually got a picture, like, on the desk right here of us on the camel and all of that. That, that was, like, a total different experience just to see that it's different parts of the world that's, like, totally different from the United States, totally different from what we're used to. The food is totally different. How they interact is different. It, it was just mind-blowing. So Dubai is definitely a place I, I, I would travel to again, but a desired place that I have been to yet that I definitely plan on going to uh, before 2020 is over with is Bora Bora. Okay. I definitely want to go to Bora Bora. And then just a place that I go, I will frequent all the time. Like, I guess this will answer the question that you actually asked me. I really enjoy my, I enjoy going to Puerto Rico. I enjoy mm-hmm. going, I always have a good, I've been to Puerto Rico two or three times and each time I've, I've had fun. I flew my family out there one time and that was pretty dope. So I feel like that's a place that's like, you can have an extreme amount of fun. It's definitely different. The water's different. The people are different. They're super friendly over there. And it's not like super, super expensive, right? It, you can bring like hella people with you and I can pay for everybody and it don't break my pocket. And they think I just did something super big. And yeah. to me, it's like, okay, you know, 
it's, it's, it's whatever, you know? So I like Puerto Rico also. That's hard. That's hard. All right. So I know you listen to a lot of uh, old Gucci. I've seen you play a lot of old Goo Wop. And a that lot was of, my first mentor. Yeah, a lot, of, <laughs> a, lot, a, lot, a lot of Chief Keep too, man. So what song explains or represents your life the most? You can either go like right now or as a whole, but either one, which, which song represents represents your life the most? Hmm, that's a good ass question. Uh, <laughs> right now, what represents my life the most? Um, that's a real good question. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think because I I listen to a lot of under like stuff that I know people don't know. Yeah, so like songs up, that bro. Gucci and Chief Keep made that's like mixtape songs that was like people would never even know what song that is. Yeah. But um to name a song that I think some people would actually know, I would say Chief Keep earned it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and why I earned, I, I earned this? <laughs> yeah. Everything I've been through in life, I definitely done earned you know, being at the position I'm at. And I earned, you know, everything that's coming, all the good things that's coming and on the way as well, too. So, yeah, you know, that's hard. That, 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 that hook is in my head. It's a lot of other stuff in the song that, you know, I, I'm not going to say relates to me, but that particular part where he says he earned it, he spent the money because he earned it, that, yeah. that, that relates to me right now. That's where we at with it. I like that, bro. I like that. And so last one, last question, bro. What's an amazing thing that you did that no one was around to see? Mm. I brought my first ment my first six-figure mentee, his first pair of designer shoes. Yeah. And, and oh, how was wow. his reaction? What well, he loved? It. Man, he was, it, it shifted his whole pair. It, 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 see, taste, once you, once you alter your event, like, that's why I got the images around, because when I look at the properties, I look at the Rolls Royces and stuff, I can't go buy a regular BMW no more. I used to think BMW was the shit. Yeah. Like, it didn't get no better than having, I got a six series convertible BMW? Oh, man, I, I made yeah. it. Until I sat in the Rolls Royce, until I sat in the Lamborghini. Now it's like, oh, wait, I ain't did nothing. Hold on. Yeah. So me doing that to, for him before he got the six figures, getting him the Gucci shoes. And um, I didn't really put it on camera. I didn't put it out there because I wanted people to think that he bought the Gucci shoes, right? Yeah. Think that he's actually having success, but he was like the hardest working person on the team. Uh, wasn't having tremendous amount of success at that point, but it was evident that it was going to come to him any day. And um, I think me buying him those Gucci shoes, it not only built his confidence, it made him feel like, people are going to perceive him as somebody that's going somewhere. Uh, it's a documentary or an audio book called The Science of Getting Rich by mm -hmm. Wallace D. Waters. And in The Science of Getting Rich, he talks about the law of increase or the impression of increase, pardon me. You want to leave an impression of increase up upon people. Like when people see you or hear from you, you want to leave an impression that you're going somewhere. You're going to another level. You're advancing in, in life. You're not just at a standstill or declining. So. When he got those Gucci shoes, yeah, that 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 definitely gave him the impression of increase, and I know he felt it. People started talking to him different, treating him a little different, just from one pair of shoes. Yeah. And I never really, like, promote. I promote a lot of the stuff that I do do, uh, even when I donate and stuff, and some people think it's corny, but, one, I want to motivate other people to do it. Two, you know, it's network marketing. So, you know, we got to kind of, like, advertise everything that we're doing that that looks good because it's attraction marketing. We want to attract people that, you know, want that type of lifestyle and want to do those things as well. But that's one thing I didn't really put out there that I got him those Gucci shoes. And, you know, that, that helps him. I, I watched ever since he got those shoes, literally like within the next couple of months later, he became a six figure earner. So that was, that was, that, that's just the one thing that came to mind that, you know, definitely, definitely uh, helped. And one, another thing, I fixed my mom's whole house up. One time, this is before entrepreneurship. This is when I was getting like money in the streets, but I definitely put like 10 bands into like getting my mom new walls, new appliances, fixed up her kitchen, remodeled her kitchen and stuff. And I, I, I wasn't using social media like that back then. So yes, it was a point in time where Millionaire McCoy was not using social media like that. 
<laughs> I'm on Instagram every minute now, but yeah, you know, I, I did that too. And I felt like looking back at it, I'm like, man, most sons don't even do so. You come up a couple thousand, 15, 20 grand, most people go buy a car, most people go, you know, just spend it on them. And I did spend some money on myself, but I definitely, you know, then forgot where I came from, went back and helped my mom do something, and fixed up a crib somewhat. So that's another thing as well. So that's dope, bro. Hey, Amen. So let the people know, man, how they can follow you, bro, so they can see what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, I am primarily every minute of the day on Instagram. Uh, you can definitely follow me at Millionaire McCoy. It's spelled like Millionaire McCoy, right? <laughs> Hope you know how to spell Millionaire. Uh, M-C-C-O-Y. Um, I'm on Facebook at Geo McCoy. Geo is actually my nickname and Facebook won't let me change it. So it's still Geo McCoy, G-E-O, last name McCoy. And um, yeah, th those are probably the best two places as of right now to, to find me. Uh, just me saying that, it's like, damn, I think I should have a website or something, huh? So I guess I'm gonna work on that sometime soon. But right now, Facebook, Instagram, those are like the two places that's easiest to locate. For sure, bro. And before we get out of here, is there anything, any, anything you wanna say to the people? Let them know. Get off your chest. Man, like I said, I said it already on this call, uh, on this uh, podcast. I'm going to say it again uh, because I, I really, this is like my motto. And, and I know it's a lot of people that grew up in, you know, with both parents in the household, with positive influence. You already got the right mindset. And that's beautiful. You, you actually have a head start on becoming successful because you already have, you know, a lot of people that, trust you like you respect you a lot of influence right you're already on a good path you already got the right mindset but i come from the gutter i come from the mud i come from dirt i come from projects i come from low income apartments i come from you know crack a crack house like literally two years i've lived in a crack house and um you know i know it's a lot of people that's still in those situations thinking like man school isn't for me i don't want to work for nobody the only thing that I can do is become an entertainer, primarily a rapper, right? Because everybody ain't trying to act or, you know, other sources of entertainment. Most people want to rap or sing. Most people want to play sports or they feel like they got a trap or scam, right? Scamming is very popular now. Anybody can scam now, right? So for those people, because I come from all of that and those are the people that I really want to touch the most. I don't want to judge you. I'm not going to judge you. You know, do what you got to do. Get it how you live. Understand the consequences that come with that. Be very mindful of it. I thought I was super smart and I was moving different from the, 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 the people that's like face tattoo, knee deep in the street, right? I never got that deep in, but I still got caught even moving smart. So just understand the consequences that come with it, but also understand this. And this is my point. Life is a movie. <laughs> You're the main actor. You're the star, all right? But you're also the director and the writer of the script. You can change your role at any given time. You're not entitled to be the same person you were last year, last month, or even after watching this podcast, guys. So keep that in mind. If I can do it, I, pre I know for a fact you can do it because a lot of you guys starting off with way more than what I started off with. Man, thank you so much for your positive words today, brother. And I'm glad you put that out into the atmosphere, man. I think this is going to be one of the best episodes we've had yet, bro. Thank you, bro. Absolutely, man. I, I love to be on here anytime you need me, bro. George Millionaire McCoy, man. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Yep.